Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Sword of the Stars 2. Um, so I'm going to wiggle the screen around a little bit because I think that helps to get rid of that uh, encoding lag or whatever it is at the beginning of the videos, um, which I saw was still there in the earlier videos I uploaded. Um, if not, well... I'll have to think of a better, uh, more permanent solution. I'm not encoding them directly. I, I'm using an XSplit to uh, do the screen recording and it's doing the encoding automatically. Um, so I'm not using an encoder myself, so I don't have control over that. Um, if I have to, I might have to sort of put in an intermediate step and, and do some encoding myself, but that would just take more time, which I was hoping to have to avoid. Um, anyways, let's get back to the game. Um, so, turn number two, uh, we just built our first station. Let's get it working. We want to complete all the requirements as much as possible that way we can upgrade it to the next level of the station each type of station has five levels and higher level stations just get more and more powerful so generally it's a good idea to upgrade them um, dock hyper habitation so okay I'll, I guess I'll, I'll look at these um, dock makes it cheaper to maintain hyper habitation just increases research across the board Sensors are, um, you know, general scanners, but also they help with um, menaces. So, so those are like um, NPC, and by that I don't mean like the AI. I mean like random encounters kind of thing. Um, excuse me. There are a few of them, like uh, swarms, von Neumann, um, and whatnot. Uh, and then these are labs that are going to specifically boost one kind of. Uh, technology. So the first ones I'm going to go for are, I'm going to put one in industrial and one in engineering. And you'll see why. I'll explain. I'll justify this a bit uh, later. Actually, why not justify it now? So let's go to the, let's stock strategy. That sounded like let's stock, but I actually meant let's talk strategy. Okay, so there's actually a really loud background noise. I'm going to turn down the game volume a bit here. Hold on. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I think that did it. Um, I'll find out when I listen to the video. So, um, okay, Hivers. Okay, let's talk about tech in, in more detail. See how some of these are orange and some of them are blue? Orange, you're guaranteed to get. This is slightly different for each race, by the way. Which are orange, rich, or blue? Furthermore, the blue ones, you don't, you aren't guaranteed to get, but you can still give it a shot by doing a feasibility study. And here's where the different races differ. For example, the Lear are very good at energy weapons. So when they are gonna do feasibility study for one of these energy weapons, they're gonna have a very high chance that the game's gonna tell them, yeah, sure, go ahead, research this, no problem. Whereas if I, the Hiver, did a feasibility study on heavy plasma cannons, there'd be a good chance that it would tell me, you have like a 1% chance of making this happen. So that's how you can kind of get a different um, tech tree, even though it's the same tech tree for everybody. However, this is great replayability because every time you play the game, you can end up with a whole different set of technologies in the sense that the, um, like some things are hard coded, like Hivers have a 40% chance to have access to, you know, a certain technology X, or, or rather I should say like, you know, the the feasibility study has a certain percent chance to be feasible, but sometimes it will be feasible and sometimes it won't. So you can have, in different games, you could have, you know, completely different looking technology spread. 
So I'm barely gonna invest in this. Um, the only thing, so okay, so the things worth mentioning here are there is a point defense laser-based system closely accessible here, which is not guaranteed. You have to do a feasibility study for it, but that's a possibility. Um, this guy, we are going to have to get uh, this guy here, heavy combat lasers, eventually. Heavy combat lasers are just a special heavy mount, but you need it to unlock certain um, uh, ship uh, classes, not classes, uh, sections. Um, you need to have this technology. So we're gonna have to research this eventually, but that's pretty much it. Torpedoes are fun. Uh, I'll probably be researching them eventually. Um, you've got, uh, these are kind of slow firing torpedoes. They're, they're like slow, hard hitting missiles versus the disruptor class of torpedo, which are, um, which disable uh, ships. And then you have the third class, which start with photonic torpedoes. These are like, uh, more like dumb fire rockets. They shoot, they have a very long range, but they just shoot in a straight line. They're not, they don't track. Um, they do high damage. Uh, they can't be shot down is their, is their advantage. Um, so uh, we'll invest in some torpedoes because even though the hivers are excel at close range combat, sometimes you're gonna wanna have a class of ship that stays far away and just shoots from afar. Okay, energy. Um, eventually we're gonna have to go down this to upgrade to antimatter, but early on it's not gonna be a big uh, concern of ours. Warheads are for missiles and mines. Hivers have access to mines e much more easily than others. I haven't honestly experimented a lot with the mines. I might play around with them. Um, if the enemy has point defense, then it's really easy to sweep mines because they don't move. So um, the thing is, I just I don't know how the AI would react to it. If I was going into a minefield, you can just set all of your weapons, even the inaccurate ones would have a pretty easy time sweeping the minefield, I suspect, but I haven't uh, tried it yet. Um, I'll have to see if this is worth investing in. Um, missiles are um, nice to upgrade. This is a nice upgrade, heavy planet missiles. So by default, each planet has uh, missile batteries that it'll use to defend itself, um, which can be very powerful actually for a fully developed colony. Um, heavy planet missiles will add to that. So it'll make your systems even better equipped to defend themselves. Um, and there are, the other nice thing about upgrading missiles is that you don't need to upgrade your ships after you do a missile upgrade. So any missile turret on a ship will automatically become more powerful as you research the different missile technologies. Um, so they're nice. Ballistic weapons. This is where we're gonna do most of our weapons research. So um, here are our three uh, weapons that we have, right? The uh, small, medium, and large turrets. Over here, we have a VRF system, which is just a buff to ballistic weapons. But in addition, here is where you have the ballistics-based point defense uh, turret, which we're going to get. So that's gonna be a priority. Um, here we have sniper cannons. These guys are like, um, they, they have terrible tracking. They're long range, small turrets. Um, not, I mean, I, I used to use them actually in, in sort of the stars one. Um, I could see these maybe on battle riders. Um, the reason you wouldn't use them now is that there's a, a they're basically only useful on forward facing weapon mounts and the hivers Although you can put a lot of forward-facing stuff on the command section, you can't really have a lot of forward-facing stuff on the mission and engine section. So um, what's 
you know, unless you put a bunch of missiles, it's kind of counterproductive. I guess if you were putting like, um, like a blazer uh, ship section or a torpedo ship, ship section, which rely on these guys here, right? You'd have like a kind of long range fighter. Anyways, I'm probably not gonna bother with this. Uh, grapplers are like a cute thing. Um, the Zul use them a lot. I'm probably not gonna use them, but they're, they're fun. Um, the most useful things here are stormers and AP rounds. AP rounds make your ballistic weapons more accurate, armor penetrating, a little less damage. Stormers are like super rapid fire, kind of inaccurate, but pack a heavy punch. Um, these are upgrades we're gonna be getting. And up here you have general upgrades and you have more up here that just make ballistic weapons even better, including one called impactors. Well, the text not called that, but you get a weapon called impactors, which are the ballistic equivalent to the heavy combat laser, just a long range, heavy hitting weapon. Okay, biotech, we're gonna give a shot at biological transfer because that makes terraforming happen much quicker if you can build those kinds of colony ships, but we might not get it. Um, we might also try to get one or two techs here that uh, allow us to colonize harder to get planets. Actually, let's, let's go back and I wanna show you. So we have all these planets that we can't colonize, hopefully not many more. I mean, hopefully we'll find some habitable planets, but for now we can't. So this guy has a climate hazard of 754. Hivers need to have at most 699, I think it is, difference in climate hazard to begin terraforming. Now, it would cost a fortune to terraform 699 planet, but it'd be doable. Um, so how do you use this planet basically if you can't even land on it to colonize it well unless you get tech that will increase your your climate hazard tolerance or, or i guess maximum limit you can use stimulus you can use colonization stimulus and what this does is it will assign a part of your budget to f budget excuse me to fund independent civilian colonizers and they're going to go out and form independent colonies of your race and then later on they, they'll gradually terraform the planet to your race specifications at no cost to you except obviously the stimulus that you give and then eventually through diplomacy you can incorporate those planets back into your empire so that's how you can eventually colonize those planets okay let's go through the rest of this um, we're going to be getting this technology next, probably. It just increases, um, just reduces costs for construction, so it's just a great economy. And right after this, there's a great technology that allows us to construct mining stations, which we're probably going to do again through stimulus mining. Um, so civilians will, autom will automatically build mining stations for us. They are good for your economy. And Hivers get that technology guaranteed, which is nice. Um, we'll probably research a few of these armor increasing technologies too, because why not make ourselves even harder to hit? Um, early on uh, in C3, our first objective, we're gonna see if we can grab expert systems because that's a great economic technology. Um, just increases industrial output. Then once we get dreadnoughts, which is the next ship class, we're gonna to wanna to get the dreadnought command and control uh, system, which is a few techs up here and we're gonna to wanna to research a bunch of techs around here which have to do with the scanning and whatnot to get a, se a mission section, not a mission, a command section called electronic warfare, which is very nice to pair up with your uh, command and control ship. This 
political science, we're going to get this guy very quickly. FTL economics is going to allow us to build tr civilian stations and set up our trade. Again, we're going to do that through stimulus trade here. So that's going to be an early priority. This, oh, well, I guess we ended up back here. This tech here, Xeno Colloquy, and the rest are for diplomacy. Um, if you don't research this, you can't initiate diplomacy with the other races, although they can initiate it with you. Um, we're probably going to fight a lot of people, but if they're going to be friendly towards us, we're not going to provoke them and start a war. So we may need to invest in this later, especially if we need to build diplomacy stations to get diplomacy points to buy back the independent colonies, which we may choose we need to build because our planets just suck and we have to colonize them through independent colonists. Uh, I'm not going to use a lot of Psy in this game, but if you can get telekinesis, and there's one more tech here, they're super strong economic technologies, so we'll give this a shot. Engineering, we're going to dig right into it. They're great economic techs. This one here, Orbital Dry Docks, also allows you to retrofit, which I haven't talked about yet, but we'll get to it. We build Dreadnoughts, we build Leviathans, and you get bigger freighters for your economy. These are This is a high priority tech tree. Uh, riders, we may develop. Um, they're not as essential for Hivers, I find. Um, although they may be useful for static defenses if we feel the need to do that. Um, shields would be nice, but honestly, Hivers are pretty well armored as it is. We might as well. The, the problem is to use shields, your command section is the one that runs the shield, and so it has fewer guns in order to run the shield. Now, some of these shields are very useful. Um, the deflector shield, blocks every physical, in other words, ballistics and missiles. Disruptor shields block everything that has energy. So if you're up against, I don't know, a fleet of Lear show up and they're like, oh my god, we've got a bajillion lasers surrender and you've got disruptor shields on, then they like just can't do any damage to you. Now, unfortunately, these only face forward. So if you're going to go into close range combat and if you're going to fight broadside, then they're not really useful. Um, which is, by the way, the same way you defeat them. So if the Leer shows up and they've got a bunch of deflector shields and all you've got are mass drivers and they're like, ha ha ha, well, all you do is run up to them and surround their ships and then they can't defend against mass drivers from all sides. So we probably won't be doing a lot of shield research. Um, let me say one last thing about uh, riders and let's actually leave this screen because, uh, and I'll turn the game sound back up. Uh, or at least in the recording, I will. I don't know if that actually worked. On my end, the volume was the same the whole way, so that was just really hard on my ears the whole time. Um, okay, so one last note about riders. Um, the way battle riders works work are that you biz, you build biz. I was gonna say design. You design a ship, which is like any other ship, but it's. Uh, and let's go to the design screen. But its mission section is going to be a battle rider carrier. So you get like two and a half, say, sections worth of ship. And in addition, it carries three little ships in it. So you get three destroyer class, which is like a battle riders, which are like a third of a cruiser. So in a way, those three, and those three have like a whole bunch of turrets on them too. So you kind of get like a bit more than a cruiser's worth of turrets. Plus, you know, tactically it's advantageous because you can move them in all sorts of different places. And um, what's nice is just like drones here, let me show you. Right now, I've only got one kind of drone that I can build, right? But battle riders, you're gonna get different types. You can equip them with different weapons. And then once the actual carriers are built, you can design all sorts of new battle riders and swap them in and out. So it gives you a lot of um, 
flexibility in terms of your tactics and it's cheaper to incorporate newer technologies for new guns you don't have to refit the whole ship you can just swap out new battle riders which are quick to produce so that's the advantage of the battle riders um, while we're here I want to design something quickly oh actually I hit back which was an accident and we're gonna update our gate ship to be long range, ram scoop. I'm gonna go ahead and, nah, I'm not gonna give it armor, I'm gonna be cheap. Well, let's see, 80, 96, yeah, whatever, let's give it armor. Okay, and let's do, um, so the goal of this design is to have very high endurance and to be tough enough to survive uh, an ambush until we can set up a gate station. So let's give it green lasers for point defense. I think, let's see, where are the turrets? They're there, there, these guys. Oh, I see, there's like one, two, three. Okay, that's pretty good coverage. Okay, so these will turn back into this because they have a pretty limited arc anyways. It'd be pretty useless. That's good. Now notice missiles take a lot of supply. So if I turn all my medium turrets into missiles, 18 turns, 107 supplies. If I turn them into plasma cannons, 20 turns, 43 supplies. So notice how it uses up a lot of supplies. Still, 18 turns is, is plenty, and plasma cannons suck anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and make most of these missiles. Maybe I'll turn this guy these into mass drivers. Do I get a turn out of that? No. How about this guy? Yeah, okay, that's a good compromise. All right, and let's just test. I want to see the coverage for the point defense. Oop. They are firing on us, taking enemy fire. Yeah, that was a bit late. Let's try again. That's not bad. Could be better. I guess I'll make these also into point defense. See, only two out of five missiles made it, so that's pretty good. Okay. And, uh, oh, I didn't talk about this here. Um, this is, um, it's explained actually in the manual what this does, but essentially it tells the weapon banks like how they should fire. So this is like free fire, do whatever you want. Um, I forget actually what all of them are. One, uh, there's concentrated, there's ripple, there's um, alpha, there's um, don't fire, hold fire. Um, for the most part, it's safe to keep it on this. Um, one of the things that's useful is, well, yeah, I guess I'll talk, well, you know what, I'll, I'll get back to this when I look it up and tell you exactly which icon is. Um, what I do know is that, for example, one of the settings is hit as many different targets as possible, as opposed to target the same target uh, with all your weapons. I'm going to submit this design. Uh, actually, let's just call it, I'm going to call it long range gate ship. Oh, and by the way, the reason design we're building these is that I want to 
be able to make cheap gating fleets with just one command ship and a gate ship and not worry about supply ships at all. And I want them to be able to go really far in terms of colonizing. So that's why I'm, I'm updating the design. You can't retrofit the existing gate ship into that because we're changing the, the sections. If I was just changing the weapons, then you could retrofit within limitations. You can't turn a missile into a beam, but you can get better beams. Um, anyways, so um, yeah, the weapon configurations uh, are important if you have, say, a uh, if you want to fire a whole bunch of torpedoes and you've got like five torpedo ships firing like five torpedoes each and it only takes eight torpedoes to kill a ship so you've launched 25 torpedoes two-thirds of them are wasted so um, if you spread your fire you're going to maximize the damage that you do so that's the kind of situation where you'd want to reconfigure that Okay, as soon as this turn ends, I think I'll stop the recording for now. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll pick up the pace a bit. There's just so much background information really to cover in this game. Um, that uh, it's easy to uh, get carried away and, and talk about all this, uh, all this strategy and all the background information. But anyways, I'll um I'll leave it at that for now and I'll catch you guys later.